stay woke, to wake up and stay woke. We are so grateful to have listeners like you. Now, uh, related to creativity, um, Sir Charles, mm -hmm. um, what what uh, tell us about that? What do you still do any of that, or you have done which? To be honest with you, uh, Dr. Fay, I um, ah, man, I, I love it, and I feel it calling on me from time to time. I feel the urge to want to write a song or perform, but as I've gotten older, I need to keep the focus on what God wants me to do, honestly. And although that was a part of my life, I think that singing and, and writing songs, um, all that was the training ground to position me for where I am today. And I say that in a lot of the keynotes that I do because when you learn how to deal with people from the various aspects of the arts, acting and singing and poetry and you know knowing how to work the stage and all that, there is an educational process that takes place even if you're not aware of it. And that's what happened to me. You know, it uh, was the training ground to teach me how to be able to impart a message, uh, a more impactful message on uh, audiences uh, that have a need today because I think people are really in pain today, Dr. Ife, Ife Williams. I think they are really hurting and it was more important to share a message that could last a lifetime versus entertaining them for an evening. But then when you speak or you act or whatever, it may be entertainment, but it can also be a lesson in something. True. So uh, do you still... In, in terms of maybe your change of what your subject matter is, do you still do any acting? The last acting job I did was with Nicolas Cage and John Voight and um, National Treasure, the sequel, Book of Secrets. Uh, and I did that, um, uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time uh, meeting um, John Voight and all the guys and, and the extras on, 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 the, on the set. But uh, I don't currently pursue it because it's not my forte, and I think that my my benefits, my skills are best utilized uh, in another area, and that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so um, do you have a, a church background? Oh, and absolutely. Does the church influence what you uh, write? Well, I think that God speaks to me every day. I have a personal relationship, as we all should, uh, with God, and uh, I am perfectly positioned because of not just the, the, the creative talents, but also because of, how can I say, I'll just be transparent. The path that I came through in New York City, you know, I was the guy that you know, wanted to be the big shot and found myself in a lot of trouble. I was a substance abuser for over 20 some odd years. And I never thought that that lifestyle would change for me, but it did change. And, I give God all the credit. He forced me to see myself for who I was and how I was. And that was the beginning of me knowing how real he was. And it also let me know that he was there the entire time. You know, sometimes uh, we hear people who have gone so low before they went high. And, and we find that among our people because uh, in the black community, there's so many reasons to... Uh, be disappointed, to be distressed, to Abs have absolutely. challenges that overtake us. So I'm always proud of people who come back and mm. do something bigger and better than they ever thought that they could do. So those of us who uh, maybe, and, and we've all been through some challenges mm -hmm. like that where we wanted to give up. Yes. But um, I, I admire you for coming back and, and for telling your story because, you know, some people are embarrassed to tell their story and they have no reason to do that. Mm -hmm. Mr. John McCain, who has just left us, yes. he, was, he was the first to admit that he was, an, he was an imperfect person. He did things that were wrong. Certainly, he did things that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I believe he was a true jewel, a true champion. Yeah. And I, I admire him in terms of, if you, if you think of nothing else other than what he did mm -hmm. in Vietnam, a war which many of us disagreed with. Yes. But what he did when he allowed others to come out of you know their imprisonment before he did he didn't take advantage of that quote white privilege that he had at that time that's correct he wanted his fellow uh, soldiers to be released so that in in and of itself is enough to be recognized as, to him to be recognized as a wonderful person and it, it's a tragedy that we have a president 
mm -hmm. who cannot recognize that, and that tells you a lot about them too. It's sad, you know, people ask me a lot of times uh, in my walks <clears throat> wherever, why do you talk about the drugs and stuff like that that you did? <laughs> well, I tell them it's not who I am, it's just what I did. It's something I went to, uh, and it further extends my relationship with God, uh, simply because if he could bring me through that, most people, well, I won't say most, I'll say many people that have gone down that path, they don't come back. So after getting off of drugs and you know being diagnosed with cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and getting over it twice, there is no doubt in my mind that God is there and here in my life, in the here and now. So I, I share about it and I talk about it simply because I am not the only one. There's nothing to be ashamed about. It's part of the, uh, how would you say, maybe the character development or the character building in uh, me as an individual to not only have gone through it, but to share people and to draw other people to him to let them know there's nothing you cannot do. If I've done this, if I've come from where I've come from, what can you not do? Absolutely, and uh, we, we find people who, you know, maybe not have been on drugs or, mm -hmm. or have done some other things sure. like that, but even the little things, you know, there are times when a person says, now why did I do that? It means that they find something wrong with what they have done, and they're willing to, ex you know, accept that and to move on, and, and you know, one of the, the art of saying please and thank you and I'm sorry. Oh my it, goodness. It just seems that we've lost it's it. It's passe. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I hope that all of us, uh, in terms of admitting who we are and, and what we may have done wrong uh, and, and how we've corrected it, can have that talk with our young people who also uh, may be in trouble but have no one to get them back on the right path. I think we can all do that to help our young people. I think it's, in, it's imperative. I really do. And, you know, I, I, I joke around, but it's sometimes I'm. I feel kind of serious. I say that I'm a millennial trapped in a boomer's body. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that is because. I understand their angst. I understand that, you know, they want to do things a certain way, and I think to a certain degree they should. However, what we grew up doing and learning is the foundation. And if they can just embrace a bit of it with the mindset they have now, with technology and all that, they will be catapulted into a